بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبة فلا Welcome back to our study of Arba'in Anawawi and in this lesson we'll study Hadith 28 through 30 so we'll study three Ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and during the course of this lesson we will as has been the norm throughout our study is that we will read the the metan read the text and if need be we will explain the metan and its significance then we will look to some of the benefits that the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati will jama'a have deduced from the hadith. So we reached hadith Thamin wa Ashroon An Abi Najih Al Irbad ibn Sariya Radiallahu Tala Anhu Al وعذنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم موعدة وجلت منها القلوب وظرفت منها العيون فقلنا يا رسول الله كأنها موعدة مودع فأوصينا قال أوصيتم بتقوى الله وسمعي والطاعة وأن تأمر عليكم عبد فإنه من يعيش منكم فسيرى اختلاف كثيرا فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين عدوا عليها بالنواجذ وإياكم ومحتثار الأمور فإن كل بدعة ضلالة رواه أبو داود وترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح. In this very renowned hadith of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, the hadith of Al Irbad ibn Sariya رضي الله تلا عن, he reported. One day the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up amongst us and he admonished us so eloquently that it moved our hearts and made tears come to our eyes. It was said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have given us a farewell sermon. So what do you advise us with? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Alaihi Wasallam said, You must fear Allah, listen to and obey your leaders, even if he were a slave. And in another narration, an Abyssinian slave is put in charge over you. Whoever lives among you will see many differences. So beware of newly invented matters, for verily they are misguidance. And whoever sees them must adhere to my tradition, and the tradition of the upright guided successors. Cling to it with your back teeth, meaning your molar teeth. And this is in Sunan Atirmidhi. And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَشَّارُ الْأُمُورِ مَحْتَثَاتُهَا And this is the narration that we, we are uh, studying. The most evil matters are those that are newly invented matters in the religion. For every newly invented matter is innovation, every innovation is misguidance, and every misguidance is in the hellfire. And this is collected in Nisa'i, Wa Abu Dawood wa Tirmidhi. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
we see the importance of clinging to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam regarding everything. Regarding our creed, aqidah, our menhaj, our methodology of how we understand and approach the text. Our manners and saluk, so how we uh, interact with others. Everything is governed by the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslim. It is an obligation for the Muslim to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith shows us that the sunnah is the means for rectifying all of our affairs with regards to differences in the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem fa in wa'tiu Allah wa'tiu rusul wa ul al amri minkum fa in tanaza'tum fi shay'in fa radduhu ila Allah wa rasuli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says obey Allah and obey the messenger and those charge in authority amongst you and if you differ then refer back to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam the way in which you refer back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by referring it back to the Quran and of course through supplication because your your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala is Al Hayyu Al Qayyum, was Sami Al Basir, the All Hearing, the All Seeing. And the way that you return it back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is by following his Sunnah. This hadith we see is in immensely important hadith to understand and contemplate and benefit from. Because what we see in this advice that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'een as if it was uh, one of the last sermons sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they specifically asked him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for advice and guidance and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying usikum bi taqwallah the first thing he advised he said usikum bi taqwallah I advise you with God fearfulness to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning adhere to the commands of Allah and avoid His prohibitions. The second piece of advice, the second part of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam statement was that He wanted or He commanded that we hear and obey the Muslim leader. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sam'i wa ta'a wa anta amara alaykum abd listen and obey hear and obey even if a slave is over you meaning commanding you is the leader that's in, that right there is minhajia that is a part of the Prophetic methodology. It is a asl minasula ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. It is a foundation from the foundations of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. <clears throat> that, and a foundation is something <clears throat> which props up other things. So, this is a foundation principle which props up <clears throat> the madhab of Ahl Sunnah. 
the way to approach Islam. The pristine orthodox way of understanding and practicing Islam. It rests upon this foundation. So the Prophet ﷺ began by advising us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning avoid sins, adhere to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then to listen and obey the, the Muslim leader. That shows us that the status of the leaders is very, very important in Islam. And that is because they are in charge of the affairs of the believers. And that is because removing them and disobeying them causes discord, disunity, and bloodshed between the believers. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّهُمْ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيْرَىٰ اِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا The one who lives after me will see many differences. This is what we see. And we see this in Islamic history. That many differences began to appear after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way to rectify those differences is returning back to the sunnah, the prescription is in this hadith. So this hadith offers us a prescription for differences and the affirmation of following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because that prescription is following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with the medicine at the end and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ be sunnati. So if you have these problems, if you have these differences, can be sunnati, then it's upon you my sunnah. Wa sunnat al khulafa rashidin al mahdin. And the sunnah, the way of the rightly guided Khalifat, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Because the Prophet ﷺ prophesies that we would see these differences and that the prescription lay with his sunnah and that of his successors. And that the ummah, that there would be many newly invented matters. And we're not talking about technology, we're not talking, we're talking about things related to the religion. And that's why he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described them as that which is negative, that which is mathmoon. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَسَيَّرَا اِخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ أَبْدُوَ عَلَيْهَا بِينَ وَاجِدْ Cling to it with your molar teeth وَإِيَّاكُمْ مُمَحْتَثَارَ الْأَمُورِ And beware of newly invented matters. The newly invented matters of Habatif Allah are those which are mithmoon, meaning those things to invent something new in the religion of Islam. Because the inferences, or what one can infer from that, when you, as Imam, I believe it was Imam Malik or Imam Shafi'i said, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, that this, the one who innovates something new Zama and Muhammad Ad Khana Risala. That the one who invents something new in Islam, it is if they are claiming that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was deceptive in his delivering of the message. You know, that he was insufficient in doing his job. That's the implication of bid'ah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says his religion is perfect. Al-yawm akmaltu lakum dinukum. This day I've perfected my religion for you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that his sunnah, the kitab wa sunnah would suffice us. 
But the one who innovates comes up with a new aqidah, a new minhaj, methodology, a new way of performing the rights of Islam that are already well established and require no addition or subtraction. It is, if, it is as if they are saying that what the Prophet ﷺ bought was insufficient. This is why this hadith is azim. And this is why we are studying this beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. From the many benefits of this hadith, firstly, this hadith shows us the importance of being preaching with beautiful preaching in dawa and when teaching and giving reminders and lectures that all of these things they require beautiful speech and a beautiful approach in a way in a means to try to invoke in the listener a concern and a concern for the importance of the subject matter. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of giving advice and its effect upon its educative effect. Another benefit of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith also shows us that we, especially those who are educating, those who are du'at ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they should be vigilant in trying to reach the hearts of the listeners and using every means which is mashroor, every legislative means, in order to touch the hearts of those people who are listening and invoke taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. Another benefit of this hadith, as this hadith shows us the importance of advising people with taqwa in general. And that all throughout the Quran and all throughout the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are over 60, uh, 76 times that it's mentioned in the Quran alone. The importance of fearing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So therefore, it becomes imperative for us to know what we mean by taqwa, as we've mentioned several times, that it means to adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions. Another benefit of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith shows us the importance of listening and obeying the Muslim authorities in everything except disobedience to Allah. And this we can refer back to as far as details, we can refer back to the prior ahadith that we uh, studied in this regard about the haqqoq, the uh, rights of the Muslim authority. And that it is for the benefit of the ummah. It's not a thing of emotionalism. It's not a thing of, uh, of, of, of affection and being attached and, you know, someone's excitement and their desires with regards to this issue. This issue is an issue shari'a, almiya, thiqiya, aqidiya. It's an Islamic issue which is based in the book in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that 
obedience to the Muslim authority and being patient and giving them advice. As is the case in this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this is a foundation of the religion. And as we mentioned the ayat where Allah tabaraka ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Ya ayu ladhina amanu wa atiyu Allah wa atiyu rasul wa awli al-amri minkum. فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commanded the believers. So this is for the believers. Now if you're not a believer, then you've got your own program and your own agenda. But for the believers, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has commanded them. يَا يَوْ لِذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And those charged in authority over you. That's a commandment from the Creator of the heavens and earth. And that if you differ, and if you differ over something, then return it back to Allah wa Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhir If you believe in the law and the day of judgment So if you're th- those people who is striving to be of the mu'mineen then your prescription is here on how to deal with all these affairs Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And obey those in charge and charge and authority over you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, which is very, very important, this is a hadith of uh, Ubadat ibn Samit, radiyallahu ta'ala in, in which he said, قَالْ بَيَعْنَا رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى سَمْعِ وَالطَّاعِ فِي مُنْشَتِنَا وَمُكْرَهِنَا وَعُسْرِنَا وَيُسْرِنَا وَأَثَرَةٍ عَلَيْنَا وَإِنْ لَا تُنَازِعُ وَإِنْ لَا نُنَازِعُ الْأَمْرِ أَهْلِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَوْ كُفْرٍ بَوَاحٍ عِنْدَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِيهِ بُرْحَانٍ رواه بخاري ومسلم This is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. متفقون عليه. The hadith of عبادة uh, بن سامت رضي الله تعالى عنه And he said that we gave the bay'ah. بيعنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We gave the bay'ah. The, the pledge of the oath of allegiance to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to hear and obey in those things which are easy and those things which are difficult. Those things which are in accordance with with what we're pleased with and those things which are we detest or that we find difficult. And that we should not remove our obedience, you know, take back the Pledge of Allegiance from those charged in authority. Unless, here's the shart, or here's the, the istithna, here's the, the istithna, here's the exception. Illa and taro kufran bawahin. Unless we see open, indisputable disbelief. That we have proof from Allah that this is without death. There's no ikhtilaf in this. It's it's clear. It's very uh jiddin. So that shows us that from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, those usul of the religion of Islam is obedience to the Muslim ruler. Even if they are wicked, even if they commit sins, that we obey them in that which is good. Countless ahadith of Rasulullah wasallam. But unfortunately, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَحْتَمُونَ Most of them they don't know and most of them they don't really care. They don't give it any importance. Because their desires lead them. They only want rebellion. They only want to take authority. They only want to have more of what they believe is their democratic rights. They only want this. They only want that. But they don't 
care for adhering to the book and the sunnah and going back to the foundation of Islam. It's not what we put in there. هذا قال الله وقال رسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. Another benefit of this hadith, ahabat fi Allah, is this hadith shows us that also there would take place اختلاف كثيرة. That there would be many, many differences, as the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said. This hadith also shows us the importance of knowing the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the importance of knowing the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, the rightly guided Khalifat, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, because that is the makhraj min al fitan. That is the way of departing or the, finding the solution to trials and tribulations and discord and disunity and disharmony. It comes by following the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin al mahdi Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the superiority of adhering to the sunnah and striving and exerting maximum effort to overcome our desires and the desires of other people because that the the people's the other desires the other ideologies the other things people are affected by they wish to cause ahl sunnah to be divided they wish to find alternatives and label it as the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and label themselves Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah but go away from the usul of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is the reality. This has been the reality and is the reality. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tazal ta'ifatun min ummati zahirin ala al-haq. So we know Ahlul Sunnah is always going to be present. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There won't cease to be a group from amongst my nation that's always on the truth. No one will harm them that opposes them until the hour is established. So Ahl Sunnah may be few in numbers. And Islam will come back gharib. It will come back strange. It started as something strange. It will return to something strange. So give glad tidings to the Ghuraba. Those people were strange. Meaning they're strange because the sunnah became strange in the land of the Muslims. The sunnah became strange on the tongues and the actions and the limbs and the aqeedah of the Muslims. Wallahu musta'an. So it shows us, Sahabat Billah, how azim this hadith, this is why we are emphasizing so much the importance of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of these fawaid. And these are just, we've only scratched the surface. But for our... Our lesson, we just wanted to stick with our approach to this text and just talk about some of the benefits of the that have been deduced by the scholars that have an educative effect upon us. And that has been the way we've studied this text. There's so many explanations of Arba'in and Noe, but we are just approaching it in a certain way uh, in order to gain the educative effect, the tarbiyah, if you will, of the text. Another benefit of this hadith, and, and also what this shows us, is the importance, as the Prophet ﷺ gave us the prescription for differences and for, uh, you know, trials and tribulations that will befall the ummah, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Cling to it with your molar seat. I cling to the sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin with your molar teeth. Your molar teeth are in the back of your mouth. That means you have to cling all the way. If you're going to cling to something and bite something with your molar teeth, it's not with your, your front teeth. But that means you the thing has to be placed firmly all the way back in your mouth and you're clinging to it. Clinging to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, that, 
that is a powerful, powerful, uh, and sim simple example for us to understand and follow. If we just really, in reality, every difference we come to, that we continue, we say, wait a minute, I heard something strange from this speaker. Wait a minute, this guy is saying this. This guy has talked about this, and this one has a new way of approaching this. Let's take it. Let's just see really quickly how does it weigh on the scale of Kitabi La Wasunat Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How does it measure on that scale? And if we plot, pop it on the scale, that's when we're going to find, that's where we're going to have the tools. Kitab wa Sunnah is going to give us the tools to measure all of these things. Not every issue is going to be black and white, of course not. And not every issue you're just going to be able to put it there and say, well, the Quran says this, the Sunnah says this, and you're going to find a big difference from what someone says. No, because the many various speakers and various ways of giving da'wah and the various madhabs and manahij of the people of desires that deviate from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course they use, some of them use the same text. But it's their understanding. Do they go back to the madhab of the Salaf Asali, the pious predecessors, Sahabat Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Ta'ala'ina Majmeen, Wa Tabi'een, Wa Taba'a Tabi'een. And the Imma Taddeen, how they understood it. Their Usul, the Usul of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. So it's very important, Ahabat Tafilah, that this gives us, this, this hadith gives us the scale for how to deal with, how to measure uh, what we hear and what we see as far as people speaking about the religion. It gives us the solution, the prescription on how to deal with differences. And the final benefit that we're going to discuss in this hadith is that this hadith also shows us that all bid'ah, all religious innovation is misguided. All religious innovation is misguided. That which has no asl, no, no precedence in the religion. So for example, someone to come with a new aspect of creed or to distort the creed, the pristine creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Or someone comes up with a new methodology on how to give da'wah. I'm not talking about technology, but I'm talking about a new way and making new conditions and so on and so forth for da'wah and how to reach the people. That it has to be done this way, it has to be done this way, and it should be done this way, and this is the way. All religious innovation is misguidance. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from bid'ah with the love.